last year, Brian and I made a plan. We wanted to go out west, and we wanted to take his boy trapping on kind of an adventure trapping trip. Well, welcome to Nebraska. We did just that. We hammered the coyotes, had a great time, dealt with some harsh weather, but we wanted to do it again. So this year we're geared up, we're headed to Kansas, and if there's any state in the country that screams coyotes, it's Western Kansas. big cottonwoods and we've got just a point that kind of separates these two canyons right here really deep beautiful setting native grass all the way around and there was four or five turds right here on the edge of this cow trail so we're setting a triple set everything we're setting this week we've got Evan again and Brian and myself so every spot we're gonna have at least three traps at we should see some seriously high numbers this week I'm not exactly sure what draws me west to trap coyotes. Um, you know, maybe it's the mystery of it all. Maybe it's the fact that there's tons of coyotes out here, or just the fact that I just love to coyote trap and see new places. I mean, this is one of the only hobbies that you can actually get a little bit of your money back. It kind of brings the kid back out of me. Going to these places is so exciting to figure out where these animals are at and what they're doing and you know making that coyote do what you want him to do in an, in his own environment it's just it's so intriguing it's so much fun at the same time you're worn out at the end of the day but there is nothing more rewarding than what we're doing Triple boys! How about that? Yeah, buddy. Killing them. Hep, hep. Yes, sir. Hey. Trip, trip. So we were literally just driving down the road. Just ate some lunch. We're about three quarters of the way through checking today. We got a little snow last night. We set these traps last night in the dark. In the dark. And 
So we were riding down the road on the way here and I said, you know what, it's time for a double or even a triple. It's just one of those locations that you can't not set. It's, this is actually an old railroad bed that cuts down through here. Cattle pastures on one side with a river and ag fields with cattle on the other side. And there was tracks and poop everywhere right here. There's actually an old cattle catch pen right here as well. But it looks like there's more coyotes here. Yeah, money spot. I think if we'd have set four or five traps, we might have caught a couple more. There's tracks everywhere in the snow, but pretty dang cool. I think when it comes to trapping coyotes, a lot of guys tend to overthink it. We're not doing anything fancy. 99% of the sets we're making are dirt holes with a few flat sets mixed in. And this time of year, we're banking on that coyote being hungry and greedy. And probably 90% of the time, the dirt holes outperform the flat sets. Like I said, in these types of conditions, we're not better than anybody else. You know, we're just a product of where we're at and the amount of work that we're willing to put in. We're, we're here for a short amount of time. We only have five days. And the only way to catch a lot of coyotes is put in the time, daylight to dark, sometimes even past that, and just get it done. Just good old fashioned elbow grease, hard work. Don't stop till the job's done. Glad Evan's here. You've caught four coyotes today. Yeah. Four of the 11. I wish we'd had a game camera on that. There were so many coyotes. I know. Who knows how many coyotes were there? That's, that's what always drives me crazy is when you do catch a double or triple like that. And especially if you don't have snow on the ground so you can't see any other tracks. But it always makes you wonder if you'd have had, you know, three or four or five traps at one location if you'd have caught more than the double or the triple that you got in the traps. Yep, this year we started making three different styles of bait, or basically three different variations of the same bait that we always have made in the past. Um, we make a bait called Anvil. It's a tainted bobcat base with all the goodies in it. And this year I split that into two. I made tainted Anvil and then we made a fresh. We've been using mainly the fresh right now, but through the next four or five days that we'll be here, we're probably gonna use some of the tainted just because it's colder and that scent will carry a little bit better. And then our third bait's a fresh preserved beaver slash muskrat base with some glands and uh, fatty acids as Robert calls them to make the coyote want to eat what's actually down in the hole so whatever it is it's working I don't know it may not yeah. be the best bait in the world that, but uh, that we spot think it is <laughs> was a lot of it was location I think because we were we were pretty much all out of bait I was out of bait Evan yeah. was out of bait yeah, location trumps bait every day of the year. It doesn't matter what kind of bait you got in that hole, but if that if that's in a spot where that coyote can be caught, if it's in the way, you know, sometimes a coyote may not be hungry. Maybe he just wants to urinate on the set, but you're still giving yourself a chance. <laughs> 